For all you speaker enthusiasts out there, get a lot of questions, see a lot of questions on uh, Yahoo Answers and other places on how to measure the impedance of a speaker, and you always want to do it with something like this. Unfortunately, you can't do it with something like this. So in this video, we're just going to quickly go through and show how to measure the impedance of a speaker. Uh, you can use this to measure what's called DCR or DC resistance, but that's all you can measure with this. The speakers that we're going to measure today are a Dayton Reference 6-inch truncated frame uh, mid-bass driver and a Dayton Reference 1-inch dome tweeter. Now this speaker that we're looking at is not a complete speaker, it's just a pre-constructed uh, cabinet with the two drivers mounted in it and there's no crossover. In fact, the only thing connected at this moment is the tweeter, so we'll be measuring just the tweeter. And to do this, we're going to need some other equipment. First, we're going to need some software. The software is called ARTA, A-R-T-A. We're going to need a sound card, in this case, uh, the M-Audio Mobile Pre. And we need an amplifier. We have a little parasound. We need a probe. This probe is homemade, based on instructions that uh, are with the ARTA software. It's pretty easy to make. Okay, now we're going to make a measurement. As you can see from the graph, this tweeter that's rated at 4 ohms actually measures from about 3.2 ohms to about 7.5 ohms. This is actually a pretty well behaved tweeter you don't really see a lot of rise in the impedance with increasing frequency uh, from about 2K where it's around 3.5 ohms it only rises to about 4 ohms at 20K so this is actually a pretty easy tweeter to work with uh, the impedance peak you see at about 600 Hertz is the resonant frequency of the tweeter that's mostly due to capacitive reactants basically from overshoot in the voice coil We've moved the wires now over to the 6 inch woofer, so we're going to measure the woofer. As you can see from the graph, this 8 ohm woofer is actually about 7 ohms to about 26 ohms. 26 ohms at the resonant frequency of about a little over 90 hertz. This is the resonance inside the half cubic foot box. If it were in a different size box, that would be at a different frequency. You can also see as frequency increases above about a kilohertz or so, impedance starts to rise. It's about 22 ohms or so at uh, 20 kilohertz. And this makes a difference when you're designing a crossover. This is why crossover design is not that simple. For example, if you were going to make a crossover 3 kilohertz, this is not an 8 ohm driver at that point. It's closer to a 10 ohm. More importantly than that, if you look in the top part of the graph, you'll see that it's not at 0 degrees phase. It's about maybe 30 degrees phase. So that has to be taken into account, otherwise your crossover will be wrong. That's why you can't just go out and buy off-the-shelf crossovers and expect them to work right, because when they design those things, they have no way of knowing what driver you're going to use with it so there's no way they can know what those values are that's why a crossover has to be designed based on the drivers that you're using and the cabinet that you're using otherwise you're going to get wrong results with the addition of a microphone in this case an Earthworks M30 we can also measure frequency response We don't exactly have the ideal conditions here. Uh, the speaker should be on a much taller stand outside, away from all uh, reflective surfaces, no obstructions between it and the microphone or behind the speaker or around the speaker or the microphone. But uh, we're going to make do where we are for this video. This is going to be a measurement of the woofer.
Once you have uh, frequency response measurements of both the woofer and the tweeter, uh, with both drivers mounted in this cabinet and with the microphone in the same spot, and you also have impedance measurements of both, you can use a software package called LSPCAD to design the crossover. If you try to do a crossover arbitrarily, it's going to be pretty difficult to get good results. Although the nice thing about something like the Arda measurement system is that you can have the measurement running continuously and you can arbitrarily put inductors and capacitors and so on uh, in line or in parallel with the drivers and see what happens. And then you can also go back and once you're done measure the total impedance and verify that you haven't caused the impedance to drop below where you want it to be. So you can do that but it's a very painful task. The nice thing about the LSP CAD is that it has an optimizer. You basically need to know something about what you're doing because you need to know uh, how to organize the parts in the crossover but you can basically choose arbitrary values and tell it what uh, crossover frequency you want, what type of uh, crossover you want like Linkwitz Riley or Butterworth or Bessel or whatever and give it a target response and then hit optimize and the component values start changing and it zooms right in on the, uh, the target and then it tells you what component values you need for all your crossover components. So it's a very nice software package it sells for around, uh, it's in euros, I think it's around 800 euros, which is I guess about $1,100 or something like that. But, uh, but it's a very nice package if you're serious about uh, getting into uh, speaker design as a hobby. So, uh, that's going to conclude this video. Uh, I'm thinking later, if I have some time, I might do some videos where I put the camera on the uh, measurement uh, display and uh, put in different crossover component values just to show what happens when you put an inductor on there or what happens when you put an inductor and capacitor on there so on and so forth and uh, give you some ideas on how you could do a crossover that way it just would be very slow and painful compared to the, the nice software from uh, IJ Data which is the LSP CAD so that's it for now